short answer is no they do not because typically the people who are involved in internal operations versus the people who are really involved in what is called it technology are so the internal organizational people are no different from the uh, people who are existing in other organizations and the it experts are really used to help the other organizations rather than uh, help you internally that's been my experience in almost all uh, seeing all it organizations help improve the operational efficiency help improve my knowledge and my ability to detect uh, whether things are going right my ability to recognize where gaps are existing in the system so it starts really from my own ability to understand how my organization is doing and then how my seniors are uh, being able to use the system for their own operation all owners pursue only one goal and that goal is expansion and the reason why expansion is pursued is because expansion is equal to happiness that are ancient wisdom and in order to expand the important requirements are not more finances more market better people or lower costs or more productivity those are not the core requirements for expansion the core requirement is the time of the owner and the senior management to make the expansion come about because if they have the time they will make the rest of the things happen and if they don't have the time even if the other parameters are conducive they can't take advantage of it uh, because of the specific nature of our work the uh, our future and our success depends upon how well we are able to operate our markets and our customers and uh, that operational information is fundamentally key i do have a small bias that the history is a important tool to learn from at the same time it can also be an important limiter of the future so a lot of our uh, direction of development for internal purposes a direction of investment for internal purposes are oriented towards where we want to go in the next 2 to 3 years and a lot of history is against our ability to go there so the enablement to get to the next 2 to 3 years is what the focus is on and presently the judgment is if we are able to improve the velocity at which we operate our future is more certain so that's where the bulk of our investments go can be used to create business innovation several of the things that we have done in the recent past could only be possible because the concept of it exists and the absence of availability of it would have prevented it i can give you a handful of examples that i think we have one of the more innovative uh, partner schemes in the market today that how do we manage a multi layer uh, partner network and if it had not been for it even to conceptualize such a framework would not have been possible similarly i think we have one of the most uh, innovative ways in which our employees self manage themselves had it not been for it even that would not have been practical so many of these ideas of doing things has emerged because it exists and it is part of the fabric of our organization we don't have a formal statement of a cio it head uh, and therefore my answer to the question is both yes and no that the people who are involved for delivering internal it are definitely part of the decision making processes i am just i just wanting to distinguish between the title called the cio and it head so functionally that role is performed by a person and that person is part of my central leadership team and therefore an integral part of the decision making process i have a advantage here probably over most other companies that uh, despite our size in some ways we do get run from in a proprietary manner because a the central leadership team consists of people from finance people from it people from sales and if there is any arbitration which is required between them then i am involved in the arbitration process so finally if we agree to disagree my decision will get taken and therefore there is no conflict which is arising out of it if they have agreed to agree 
in any case, there is no conflict with the belief system that we have got and for the areas that uh, either we deliver solutions in or solutions that we require for our business. Presently, and because my focus is really on business, when I use the word business uh, framework, it is whether I am looking at my finance, whether I am looking at the way my inventory operates and whether I look at the way my operations are, get, are getting done. So, if I take the sales framework, it is a well established fact that the concept of a centralized uh, environment is a useful concept. For all other environments, because there you are dealing with volatile data. I am using the word volatile data in the sense that the data is not of critical importance either legally or uh, operationally and it is occasionally okay not to access it. For all business critical data, our belief has been that we need to be in custody and even my customers need to be in custody and from that perspective, the direction in which cloud computing is going and the SAS model that people keep talking about as the panacea for SME, we genuinely do not believe in that yet and I am not sure whether we will ever believe in it. That does not mean that the need for remote computing does not exist. And the technology that we have adopted is our own and that is the same technology which we sell in the market which is that you can do remote computing and yet remain in custody of your data and that very strongly believe that that is going to be the path of the future and we are going to be one of the people who will solve this problem. And we use it extensively in our own organization. It is actually very simplistic. I will, let me be candid there that we are an SME right? and the way most SMEs operate. I am using the word SME from the perspective that we are definitely not a HLL, definitely not a Reliance, definitely not an ITC. And therefore, the same degree of hierarchical, hierarchical concepts don't exist and hierarchical processes don't exist. So, if a need has been felt, the maximum discussion which takes place is to understand the need and to recognize the risk that we run if we don't take a decision in its favor. If we judge that we will run a risk if we don't take a decision in its favor, then the decision is taken and the financial implications of it are therefore secondary. If it is just a nice thing to have, then most of the time it depends upon your present mood of releasing finances for things which are nice to have rather than things which are necessary to have. And I believe that most SMEs probably run the same way. There several times you take decisions for things which are not necessary but nice to have simply because you have availability of funds and you don't mind spending it. And wherever things are necessary, funds never get in the way. Last year, we spent probably about one and a half crores. And this year, we are probably spending a little bit more because we have, uh, due to the recent uh, change in our service model to the customer, where we have introduced the concept of Talinet, we have invested very heavily in how to make a, a worldwide but presently na nationwide uh, Talinet framework available and in that context we have already spent upwards of 15 crores and we will probably spend upwards of another 20-25 crores in that direction. But those are not really for organizational IT. See, my organizational IT incremental spend is very minimalistic because a lot of it is in-house and a lot, some of the expenditure statements which are made is the expenditure we make in-house to reach our uh, objectives.